is a simple dive into the quantum computing realm for you. While it's a bit of a simplified take, it should give you a glimpse into the quantum realm's prowess, compared to even the speediest, most robust classical computers, outpacing supercomputers and vast data centers, all while sipping on electricity. It is intriguing, isn't it? So let's unravel this simple narrative that clicked with me. Now, classical computers, the ones we've got humming at home or in the office, are all about certainty. They run on semiconductor technology, and when you toss a task their way, they go through it step by step with a clear yes or no, on or off at each juncture. The outcomes are as predictable as your coffee craving in the morning. Fire the same question at them, and you'll get the same answer every time. They tackle tasks one at a time. Sure, they're speedy, but when faced with colossal challenges, the kind that boggle the mind, they start to drag their digital feet. They'll get through it, but oh boy, it could take them ages, literally from weeks, months to years, and in extreme scenarios, millions of years. Now enter quantum computers, the cool, mysterious cousins. They play by the rules of probability and love multitasking. Unlike our classical buddies, they don't come with a monitor and keyboard. Instead, they're in cahoots with the classical computer that acts as their voice and ears managing the back and forth of information. The quantum computer dives into multiple solutions at once, exploring a multitude of answers simultaneously. This tag team of classical and quantum computing goes back and forth, hashing out the details until they hit upon the answer. It's like having a super-powered brainstorming session that cuts through complex problems like a hot knife through butter, all within a fraction of the time and energy. And that, my friends, is a tiny peek into the awe-inspiring world of quantum computing. With that said, let's delve into quantum computing and how it works. Imagine a world where two contrasting marvels coexist. On one side, you have the ion trapping chamber, a system that harnesses the power of quantum mechanics right at room temperature. On the other, delve deep into the chilling embrace of a dilution refrigerator, Colder than the vast interstellar void housing the superconducting circuits of Google's quantum computing system. Two different approaches, each pushing the boundaries of what we know as computing. This isn't a scene from a sci-fi movie, it's the cutting edge of today's technology. Intrigued? Strap in as we venture into the enigmatic realm of quantum computing. Quantum computing, a term that might sound like science fiction to many, was once a mere concept introduced by the visionary physicist Richard Feynman. He pondered the complexities of the universe and questioned if our classical computers could ever simulate it. This idea paved the path for the creation of quantum computers. And while the underlying principles can be intricate, what we're about to explore is a simplified yet accurate portrayal of quantum computing vis-a-vis -vis its classical counterpart. Unlike the classical probability we deal with daily, quantum mechanics offers us a new rulebook. This idea paved the way for the development of quantum computers. Unlike the classical probability we encounter in our daily lives, Quantum mechanics introduces us to a new set of rules. In the classical world, determining the probability of a coin landing tails 10 times out of 20 seems straightforward. We can calculate the odds mathematically based on the coin having two definite states, heads or tails. But on the quantum scale of photons and electrons, particles behave very differently than our macroscopic coins. Quantum particles can exist in multiple states or positions simultaneously. For example, before it is measured, an electron could be in multiple locations orbiting an atom at once. The quantum realm doesn't conform to predictable probabilities. Instead, particles inhabit fuzzy superpositions. This leads to a key distinction between classical and quantum systems. Before a quantum particle is observed or measured, it exists in multiple possible states simultaneously. This phenomenon, known as superposition, 
is a fundamental principle of quantum mechanics, and it paves the way for understanding another uniquely quantum concept, quantum amplitudes. So, what is amplitudes in quantum computing? Let's delve in. First is the complex values, unlike classical probabilities, which are always real numbers between 0 and 1, quantum amplitudes can be complex numbers. This means they can have both magnitude and phase. Superposition is the core of quantum mechanics. Next is the superposition. In classical computing, a bit can be in one of two states, 0 or 1. In quantum computing, a qubit, quantum bit, can be in a superposition of both zero and one states simultaneously. The state of the qubit is represented by a combination of amplitudes for both these states. Next is the interference. One of the most peculiar behaviors of amplitudes in quantum mechanics is interference. Just as waves in water can interfere constructively, adding up or destructively, cancelling out. Quantum amplitudes can also interfere when qubits are combined. This behavior is harnessed in quantum algorithms to amplify correct solutions and diminish incorrect ones. Next topic is the entanglement. When two qubits become correlated in such a way that the state of one qubit is dependent on the state of another, they are said to be entangled. The combined state of these qubits is described by amplitudes that can't be separated into individual states. This phenomenon is fundamental to quantum computing and has no classical analog. And then there is the measurement. So when a qubit is measured, it collapses to a definite state, either zo or one, based on the squared magnitude of its amplitudes. If a qubit has an amplitude of 0.6 for state 0 and 0.8 for state 1, then the probability of measuring the qubit in state 0 is 0.36, 0.6 squared, and in state 1 is 64, 0.8 squared. And let's talk about the evolution and quantum gates. Quantum gates, which are the quantum version of logic gates in classical computing, modify the amplitudes of qubits resulting in the evolution of their states. These gates are used to manipulate qubits to perform computations. In quantum mechanics, the behavior and state of particles are described by wave functions, which are mathematical representations of probability amplitudes. These amplitudes, when squared, give us the probabilities of finding a particle in a particular state. The fundamental shift in understanding from classical to quantum mechanics revolves around these amplitudes. But what sets quantum apart is the behavior of amplitudes. While probabilities always range between 0 to 1, amplitudes can be both positive and negative, allowing them to cancel each other out. This cancellation is a central quantum phenomenon. In summary, amplitudes in quantum computing represent the complex probability values that determine the states of qubits. Their unique properties like superposition and entanglement and behaviors such as interference are what give quantum computers their potential computational power. This is a vast simplification, but it provides a foundation for understanding the nuanced behaviors of quantum systems. Meet the qubit, the foundational unit of quantum computing. Unlike classical bits that are either zo or one, qubits can be both thanks to superposition. And when qubits intertwine in a state called entanglement, their outcomes are interconnected in mysterious ways. Imagine a book with random gibberish on each page. The true information isn't on individual pages, but in their correlations. Reading it requires observing many pages together. Similarly, quantum entanglement holds vast information in interrelated qubits. However, the challenge arises when we attempt to measure a quantum system. Upon measurement, it collapses into a classical state, giving either a zero or a one. In quantum mechanics, the act of measurement is one of the most intriguing and debated topics. 
When we measure a quantum system, it collapses from a superposition of multiple potential states into a single definite state. This means that until we measure a qubit that's in a superposition, we can't say definitively whether it's a zero or a one. However, once we measure it, the qubit assumes one of these states based on its probability amplitudes. What's even more mysterious is that a quantum system doesn't need a conscious observer to make a measurement. Even unintentional interactions with the environment, like an outside wave or another particle interfering, can effectively measure the quantum system and cause it to collapse into a definite state. This phenomenon, often referred to as decoherence, is a significant challenge in quantum computing because it can lead to errors. The exact mechanism of how and why this collapse happens is one of the biggest unresolved questions in quantum mechanic. It's tempting to think of these behaviors as being the result of our current technological limitations or incomplete understanding. Yet, numerous experiments have shown that this is a fundamental aspect of nature. It's not just that we don't know how to measure a quantum system without disturbing it. It's that the very act of measurement, even indirect or unintentional, fundamentally changes the system. Some physicists and philosophers argue that we may never fully understand why measurement causes collapse. It's a peculiarity of the quantum world that challenges our intuitive understanding of reality and forces us to confront the limitations of our knowledge. So, now it is a good time to explain the indirect measurement in quantum systems. Indirect measurement, also known as weak measurement, is a technique where the quantum system is not fully collapsed to a definite state, but is instead gently probed to gain some information about it without causing a full collapse. This allows for more nuanced interactions with the quantum system and can be particularly useful in certain quantum computing and experimentation contexts. Here's how indirect measurement is implemented in two of the most prominent quantum computing architectures. First, let's explain indirect measurement of ion trapping architecture. For example, the Ionka quantum computing system. In ion trap quantum computers, individual ions charged atoms are suspended in electromagnetic fields. These ions serve as qubits. The state of an ion qubit is often determined by its electronic state. A common method of reading out the state is by using fluorescence. When the ion is illuminated with a laser of a specific frequency, it will scatter light by fluorescing only if it's in a particular state. By detecting this scattered light, the state of the ion can be determined. This is an indirect way of measurement because the ion is not being directly manipulated to determine its state. Instead, its response to the laser light provides the necessary information. Next is indirect measurement of the superconducting qubits, such as Google's system. Superconducting qubits are tiny circuits made from superconducting materials. These circuits can carry an electrical current without resistance, allowing them to maintain their quantum states for longer periods. The state of a superconducting qubit is typically measured using a device called a Josephson junction. When combined with microwave pulses, this junction can probe the qubit state without directly interacting with it. The process involves sending a microwave pulse to the qubit and then measuring the reflected pulse. The state of the qubit affects the properties of the reflected pulse, allowing its state to be determined indirectly. Both these methods are designed to minimize the disturbances to the quantum system while extracting the necessary information about the qubit states. However, it's worth noting that no measurement can be entirely non-intrusive in the quantum realm, but these techniques come close by minimizing the impact of the measurement process on the quantum system. After explaining the measurement, let's explain the interference. To extract meaningful information, we need to harness interference. Interference occurs when two waves collide. If one wave peaks while the other dips, they nullify each other. In quantum computing, this principle helps amplify the probability of obtaining the correct answer. By designing sequences of qubit gates, scientists can ensure that amplitudes reinforce constructively, enhancing the likelihood of desired. And the next topic is quantum algorithms. 
Since the mid-90s, the world has witnessed significant strides in quantum algorithms. These breakthroughs hint at applications in cybersecurity, search optimization and more. But the true potential of quantum computers remains an enigma. While their practical applications are still debated, there's no doubt that they've opened a new frontier in our quest to understand the universe and perhaps solve some of most urgent problems we face today, such as new drug discovery, search optimization on massive data sets, cybersecurity, global warming and pollution. I hope you enjoyed this glimpse into the fascinating quantum realm. While quantum physics opens up complex new concepts, this video aimed to break it down in simple terms to aid understanding. Quantum computing promises to revolutionize everything from medicine to cryptography in the future. It's an exciting time as these superposition-powered machines start to come online. Please subscribe and share this video if you found it useful. Your support allows us to continue creating more content that makes quantum computing accessible for everyone. The quantum future is unfolding rapidly, so let's navigate it together step by step. Until next time, keep imagining the amazing possibilities that arise when we understand these quantum principles. The foundations we've built today will hopefully inspire you to dive deeper into this revolutionary computing paradigm that may soon shape our world.